Hey, welcome to Soap Tape episode 20. I'm your host, Richard Mendez, and today we have with us the Faye. Thanks for having us. If you guys could uh, go around and introduce yourselves and what you play, we'll start off over here. Hi, my name is Kayla, and I play bass. I'm Ryan, I play guitar. My name is Aram, I sing. My name is Aiden, I also play guitar. Hello, I'm Francis, and I play drums. Um, so, dude, I'm really excited to have you guys here. This is our 20th episode, um, 10th episode in this studio. And uh, I just, I wanted, I was just like hoping like, man, hopefully for 20, we have like a band that like I'm, I'm like really into and I'm really into you guys. Like, man, you guys sound really good. I see, I seen, uh, there was this ro- weird post you had where like, yeah, that, that one with the, the, the angle. Yeah. All the kids are doing that nowadays. Yeah. But uh, you guys did it best because that song was like, what the fuck? It's so hypnotizing. And I was like, damn, I got like, you know, they submitted an application just like every other band and they had something interesting. I looked, I checked it out. And then the ultimate thing was how it was the music. I listened to the music and I thought it was amazing. Like I really, I was like, wow, this is really unique. Um, thank you. Uh-oh. Oh, thanks. Thank man. you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I just had to say that before we get into the rest of the episode um but um can you guys talk about how you guys formed yeah uh francis you want to start of us oh, man. <laughs> founding father yeah so uh this was a this was a quarantine project and uh prior to that i had met both aiden and aram at the same place on the same day but they haven't met um and then one day i just thought i should hit them up and we formed this whole thing and then but that was a different band it was a different what was band. it called <laughs> oh, i can't shit. remember Deep cut. You know? it was we called <laughs> boba love trash <laughs> 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 and that was really their biggest fan <laughs> <laughs> yeah guess. francis had a solo project because he was in a we met at chain reaction in anaheim and he was in another band and i was in another band and we we're all in the same lineup and then aram was there to support him i was just watching uh. yeah <laughs> but um we all didn't meet at the same time so uh he wanted to start his own thing like we're he was on guitar and vocals because he's also it's an underrated thing we don't gatekeep but um i gatekeep <laughs> yeah he has gatekeep. a really good voice and really cool guitar guitar stuff he has on solar, solar project projects. yeah oh, okay but he hit us up and then we're, i was down i was like what 2020 yeah like around yeah. 20 20 maybe like may or june halfway through yeah that. i was like halfway through 2020 and like, what you guys are like we'll join but you gotta like, hop on drums or what <laughs> no i, was like, <laughs> no, I, I was gave on up bass. on guitar because uh i just didn't like it uh, nice. Well, not every 2020 project was a successful <laughs> yeah. one. Let's just say, besides this band, you know, like you guys. I, I, again, I, I think you guys are great. Um, so you, you haven't known each other for too long, which is contrary to as w- what's been going on on this show. Uh, we've been getting a lot of uh, bands who've known each other for years, some decades, some since they were kids, some met in the womb, um, and you guys, uh, con- like, not that. Um, so you've only known each other a few years. Um, uh, wow that's gonna lead to a lot of questions later um <laughs> <laughs> for sure um and so how did you two uh, get into the band well i was in a band with uh ryan over here okay uh, like i joined a band with him or the solo project that i'm a part of yeah, yeah. Uh, shout out el segundo el segundo yeah el segundo. daniel if you're watching this and then uh, <laughs> i miss you you better be watching <laughs> yeah he better, <laughs> he, he better no, i told him to hit you guys up yeah <laughs> but uh yeah so i met ryan through there and then uh, with Kayla, um, my friend was starting a project. He needed a bassist. She was an online friend. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was also a biggest fan. And uh, one day she was just like, oh, you should invite this guy and like to play drums. And so oh, yeah, I was like, I forgot about that. I was like, OK, yeah, I'll, I'll go. Like, how far is your place? And it was like a minute yeah, away. We live like down oh, the street yeah. from each other. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I was like, you're telling me this whole time I could have just walked over here. <laughs> Uh, that's always a treat when you live close to someone. You oh, know, yeah, it's crazy. You know, you end up becoming good friends with. We used to live close to each other, huh, Jesse? Like 20 minutes away, 15 minutes, something like that. Funny enough, Aram and Kayla have known each other longer than oh, yeah. anybody. Oh, really? The war is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> I actually went to elementary school with her older brother. Oh, okay. In high school, too, I guess. Um, and they were best friends. <laughs> like, yeah. they have baby pictures together. <laughs> and I always uh, send them to. <laughs> and then one day she showed up at my house and i was like i know you <laughs> and she was like i know you too and then uh, and it was like kind of awkward <laughs> like, yeah. do we like acknowledge that we know each other yeah. 
Damn, that's that's crazy. So like, it's like a lot of interweaving here. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, from meeting weird. up at a show to like turning out, you know, him for all, this whole time. Wow, that's 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 dope. Um, and man, that, that that's tight. That's like great for me to hear because uh, I mentioned it to uh, a lot of times on this show. But like, I've been in bands and like they don't really work out, and I'm like noticing like, man, well, like a lot of the bands they end up working out. Like they've known each other for a while. I'm in a band right now and like it's going really good. Um, and I, I've just met those guys like in the last year and yeah, it's, it's going great. So like it's great to see another band as like as good as you guys doing like really dope shit, you know? Um, and you guys seem to get along really well too. Like you guys are already like throwing jokes and shade at each other and shit. Like uh, that's all. Oh, those nice aren't jokes. Mm. No, <laughs> I don't think it's a bit anymore. I just, I'll just stop laughing then. <laughs> um, all right, man. Well, uh, Dude, well, I can't wait to hear you guys perform for us here today. So um, when you guys are ready, let's get into it. Oh, and 
so happy you guys are here like uh you guys <laughs> what's so funny no, i didn't know you were rolling so i interrupted you it's like <laughs> oh, then you know how many times people interrupt each other on this show um but yeah no i'm really happy you guys are here you guys are a group of really talented musicians um i'm um, pretty crazy y'all found each other the way y'all found each other but uh i think you guys are really elite songwriters um i i no, i'll be honest like not the most technical playing but the like i think in my opinion very technical songwriting um you guys know when to play your instruments you guys know when to add these parts do you guys spend a lot of time writing these songs or do they just come fall out of your soul the way they do the How way i feel like we started writing songs was i would pick up a guitar and it would just be just me and then i would like introduce the idea to everyone mm -hmm. and then we just build from there okay yeah and all right so that I, the song that I'm so, so thankful you guys played it today I really love that song um, what's the name of it again it's that Fran second one Fran Frontega, uh, Frontega. Oh, Frontega. Yeah. yeah I love that song and I, I'm sure a lot of people do um, how long did it take you guys to write a song like that that's all that is Aiden's <laughs> song actually oh really yeah yeah because oh, it's yeah. the, the guitar part like it's really catchy oh thank you yeah, yeah. Um, shoot yeah, that, the Lord of this song is crazy. Um, oh. <laughs> I'm not going to go fully into it. but Go into it, man. Now's the time, yeah. uh, <laughs> if ever. <laughs> yeah, I, I wrote the riff um, last year. I had an internship in Santa Cruz for like three months. And um, I had the guitar riff. And then it's the first time I wrote lyrics for the band, too. So I don't know if you saw any of the videos on social media. But um, we're trying to like, I don't know. It's like I, uh, I wrote it. I guys a bit, yeah. 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 So I, I wrote it in a way to like where it's like accidentally leading someone on and also yeah. from a perspective of getting led on from both both sides so very relatable um, nowadays right yeah oh okay yeah yeah, and for, yeah I didn't, <laughs> for better or worse but um yeah yeah it's the first time like lyrics came so natural to me because it was a place it came from a place where i was actually going through at the time mm -hmm. so uh, i brought it to the band and i think like we were talking about earlier our band's like we haven't been consistent it's been on and off we haven't really done shit throughout the years but um I think that song really brought us back like oh i had this idea and then we all kind of built on it but we didn't start recording it until like june of this year mm -hmm. like it was just an idea sitting there and it finally developed in june we went to a studio and laid it down and i think at least i am like i'm really satisfied how it turned out but 
It sounds like amazing. One. Um, and I see you guys posting uh, some recent like studio sessions. Is that from that? Yeah, yeah. that's from that session. Oh, okay. Oh, shout cool. out Andrew. Andrew, Andrew. Andrew, the producer. Yeah. 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 yeah shout out Andrews. Andrew Dude, McKee. you're really good. It sounds really good. I, I always hope people are watching it and I can talk directly to them. That's like my portal to the world. Um, keep it real. Oh, that's good. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and um, speaking of social media, like I, I feel like you guys are doing it well. Um, you know, that's part of the, the act nowadays. You got to be tech savvy and, you know, all that. I mean, we're terrible at it. We, we, you know, that's why we got all these cameras that does all the work for us. But um, the way you guys post is like it's, it's not it's not annoying. Like I, I like uh, that's a very good compliment, believe it or not. Like, <laughs> dude, there's a lot of bands out there and they're, they're working harder on their post than they are their music, you know. And you guys are like doing it in a way where. I mean, that's when I when you guys applied and I looked at your Instagram, I was like, holy shit, like th this is tight. Like, this is tight. Like, I feel like I'm learning who they are. I'm listening to your music. I love the music. I love the post. It's not cheesy. Like, <laughs> it's it's cool. It's funny, you know. Um, but then again, I'm a little older, you know, so I don't really know what's cool nowadays. But um, can we talk about you guys' influences? Uh, who do you, uh, where do you guys get your, your, um, oh, oh, no, hang on. I just looked at Francis. <laughs> Francis, you want to talk about your influences? <laughs> um, there's a lot of shared influences and a lot of clashing influences in this band. Uh. Uh, I, I grew up listening to a lot of like metal, hardcore, and punk, and that's something that Aiden and I share. We're big Blink-182 yeah, fans. Big Blink -182. Uh, you could probably hear it in my playing. Yeah. But another big influence is the, the Rev from Avenged Sevenfold. Yeah. Original drummer. Amazing oh. drummer. Yeah. So. That guy's ridiculously good, dude. Yeah, ridiculously yeah. good. R.I.P. Oh, shit. I didn't know he died. Yeah, it's, it's oh. so sad. <laughs> Start laughing. <laughs> I never get to see him ever live, so. Oh, that sucks, dude. That's okay, why I, no, I want to catch Paul piece. McCartney so bad, dude. Yeah. We were just talking dude, about yeah. him in this episode. Cause like, dude, that guy's, yeah. No, he's legit. Yeah, and, what, and what about the rest of you guys? Uh, you said they clash. What, what, how would your influences clash? It was a running joke when we first started being a band <laughs> that uh, that I hate Blink-182. I don't hate Blink-182, uh, but um, nah, bro. it was just funny because they used to just, like, one of us would start talking, and then immediately they just start playing Blink-182 <laughs> like, every time we met him. Just it. interrupt him when he's All talking. All the smoke. Yeah. 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 Wait, so what, um, I can't put my finger on what, who you sound like to me, but you got a great voice, man. Very... You, man. Um, it, it's just it's just there it speaks to your soul it really pierces my ears in a great way that's a good compliment by the way i thank know you. i'm doing terrible with those today but dude you have a great voice <laughs> no, you're good, you're good. Thank you, thank you. what where do you where do you uh get inspiration for that from i think i attribute a lot of like my music taste to my mom like growing up she would like listen to a lot of like oh. jazz and like bossa nova and like she would like mm. a lot of like boomy voices but one thing she got me was a lenny kravitz greatest hit cd ah, and i listened to that thing on dude. repeat so lenny kravitz is one of my favorite artists dude. really yeah he doesn't have a lot of hits but man i love his voice i love the way he sings yeah. oh my god that makes sense so i feel like i take oh, a lot of like vocal fry influence from him and then i really like artists that like play with imagery and like lyrically like Dijon has like a really cool style where he like he sings from the soul you know so mm -hmm. I like I like that type of vibe and um do you share some of the songwriting like lyrically with uh Aiden forgive me yeah, yeah? okay yeah, yeah. so do you guys write most of the lyrics together um I mean Frontega was like the only one I really oh like, yeah, that was all you yeah I honestly love his songwriting but uh, mm -hmm. other songs that's all all around damn Dude, he wrote a great song for you. Like, cause you sing it. Like, no wonder you guys are like, yeah, we gotta get this shit going, man. Cause that shit's tight. That's dope. It brought and, us uh, back. Yeah. And Ryan, what a, what a, what a, like you're a very in the pocket guitarist. Mm. Uh, you know, you, I don't. You don't add anything that doesn't need to be there. But when it you come in, it feels like you can't imagine the music without it. Yeah. You sound, uh, sound amazing, man. Um, I think my biggest influences probably for that type of guitar playing would be like Johnny Marr mm -hmm. from the Smiths. Yeah. yeah. Usually his parts are pretty well written and like not over the top, mm -hmm. just like the right amount of stuff to yeah. make the song better. Yeah. Um, the Beatles, especially too, obviously. And yeah. 
So you, do, you like George Harrison a lot? Yeah. 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 I can hear a lot of that. Like uh, the way you you kind of um, you don't you don't um, you're not too parallel with what he's doing melodically. You kind of mm -hmm. go your own way. Hmm. And I rep I appreciate that because like hmm. it keeps it very interesting. You hear a melody one way, that's catchy. Then you hear a guitar riff, and then that's catchy. And yeah. you're like, shit, this is an interesting <laughs> ass song. And that's what I mean. You guys like are such great songwriters. You know what I mean? Um, and uh, Kayla, uh, can you talk about some of your influences? Um, I feel like they all have like shared influences, and I I listen to like a lot of funk, <laughs> like oh, like really? Wolfpack. Yeah, I like Joe Dart though. is like a really cool bass player that I look up to and like Blue to Tiger is really cool. Um, but yeah, I feel like I like to hold it down like, and I let everyone else shine. That's what I like about bass playing the most. <laughs> and uh, forgive me if I'm wrong, but I feel like the, all the instruments you guys have in your hands, those are all your first instruments, correct? First instruments? Like, like, did, like you started on guitar, you, st you oh. stayed there. You started mm. on the guitar, you stayed there. Or what, what about you? Um, I guess I started singing and playing guitar around the same time. Oh, okay, okay. And you were a guitar player, and did you hop on or are? Oh no, I've been first? a I've been a drummer since like eight. Yeah, it's in your blood, huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, My yeah. dad was a drummer, so it kind of runs in the. Oh, family. okay, okay. I was like born into it, basically. And Kayla, you've always been playing bass. No, I was a guitar player first. <laughs> That's I a started passage. playing. You're yeah. not a real bass player if you didn't start on guitar first. You're so right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, everyone needs a bass player, so. <laughs> Your um, playing is really good. Like, it's it's um, it's groovy for sure. Thank for sure. You. You, like, you hold it down. Um, Very funky. Uh, And it, it, man, I'm telling you, I really love the way you guys all play together because he has these guitar parts that kind of invite you to fill in the grooves. You know what I mean? And then the vocals laid over them is like butter on toast. Like, it, and, and then this guy, you know, just throws a couple of random ingredients in there that you feel like wouldn't make sense, like strawberries or something like that. <laughs> but once you eat it, you're like, son of a bitch. <laughs> and then, you know, this guy's just mm. cooking back there like a toaster, dude. Oh my God. <laughs> I really like you guys. I'm so excited. Like, um, again, 20 episodes in, I was like, I wanted like a fucking band I, I really like on here. And the schedule worked out perfect. I was like, oh, they're number 20. Hell yeah, I get to listen to some dope-ass music for episode number 20. It's a big deal for me. Um, so I really appreciate it, you guys. Oh, thanks, man. Um, yeah. Oh, let's talk about your gear. Um, oh, you know, you got a lot of pedals. So, And I've been watching my episodes back, and I, I say the dumbest thing when it comes to pedals, y'all. So I'm, I'm just going to let y'all, you know, you got a lot of pedals. I'll just say that. Um, let's talk about the instruments. So, so Let's start with you, Kayla, because that, that peep, um, that, what is that? Uh, it's a Fender Jazz bass. Fender Jazz, mm -hmm. I always forget. That's a nice ass bass. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, honestly, I didn't even buy this because <laughs> I used to <laughs> take guitar lessons because I'm from Corona. Mm -hmm. And when Fender was still open, they offered lessons. Mm -hmm. So they gifted the, like, gifted me this bass because they needed a bass player for one of the bands and i never gave it back to them Damn. <laughs> we'll, we'll black it out yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> we'll put a big black bar over yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh ryan dude that that thing's beautiful as well oh thanks dude what kind of a uh, guitar is that this is a uh, fender jaguar um what's it called tide pull blue i think it's like a kind of unique blue color yeah you don't see it that often that's that's a uh, it's the first time i've seen one it. this one yeah it's pretty cool. Nice. My, uncle, my uncle hooked it up for me. Really? After high school graduation, he was like, yeah, go pick out a guitar at Jeez. Sam and Ash. Oh, like, dude, got yeah. that sentimental value. Mm -hmm. Yours too, but like in a different <laughs> way. Yeah. You thief. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, Aiden, uh, can you, I think, did you bring that one last time? No, I had the, the telly last time. Oh, that's right. Yeah. The telly, the, the natural yeah, the, wood the semi hollow, yeah. Also, by the way, I got to mention, the only person ever ever in the history of this <laughs> show to be on it twice so no, you were modern yeah, you were here yep don't, don't clap dude, oh, dude that deserves a clap bro <laughs> thank you no it's cool thanks for having me i really like what you guys are doing it's cool but, and um, yeah you decided to come back who would have thought you know i thought <laughs> after the first one he would have been like dude what are they doing <laughs> you know you can't, you're here um so last time you brought a telecaster and here you are you had to bring a different one show off a little bit <laughs> Show off the collection. Yeah. Um, no, my telly is like guitar nut actually busted at our last show. So uh, I can't even play it. And then I love this Jazzmaster. It's a Ventura. I forgot what year they made it, but it's Olympic white. And I got into it once I started like getting into shoegaze. 
Mm-hmm. It's the first guitar I bought, like, brand new. Like, the other ones I always had used or I borrowed, but I've saved up for it. And um, I just got a set up recently, too. And the Guitar Center tech that worked on it, he fucking hates Jazz Masters because I have this problem all the time. Like, these strings fall off the bridge, and I play really hard. So, yeah. like, it's always a problem where it comes off the bridge. So I've learned how to, like, just be more gentle. But yeah. other than that, I love how it sounds. I love how glassy it is. And it's a different sound than my telly for sure. But yeah, no, that, that thing is that thing is beautiful. I, I I've always strived to own one of those, but then I'm always like, I gotta get a Telecaster first because I don't I don't have one of those. No, I love Teles. Yeah, it's like my main yeah. guitar. But I just started playing this one again. Francis, can you um tell us about your fucking badass? Oh yeah, badass fucking drum set, dude. I love a matte black drum set, dude. Oh man, I I love him too. Um, it's a birthday present. Uh, thank you, Dad, if you're watching this. I hope you are. Oh. Um. Very beautiful kit. Probably my dream kit, honestly. I wouldn't ever trade this for anything. DW. Yeah. Dude, that thing is... It. I, I can't believe I'm playing it sometimes. I can't believe you brought it. Like, you know, like, <laughs> people have been bringing some things here. You know, <laughs> no, no shade, you know? But, like, people have been bringing some drum Dude. sets. And they're great, but, like, that's probably the, the sickest <laughs> fucking drum set we've had on this show, dude. I had to show him off. Um, yeah, he's... I just love him so much uh what size are they can you tell us if i know it correctly i think my snare is a 14 i eventually want to get a, a bigger one yeah a 14 by 7 i think yeah this is a 12 by oh let's just i'm just gonna say it's a 12 this is a 22 i've always wanted a 22 so super happy about it and then this is a 18 i believe mm. for tom so kind of a beast of a kit yeah definitely the loudest too because i've had to to turn everything down i usually have like a preset for all the on the for the mix of the band and and i go from there it just speeds up time uh that that might be my fault my bad no no that's (laughs) that's cool dude like uh, i think um you know i i I was telling you guys off uh camera that we used to backline and every band that was coming here was playing my drum set and that was cool but then i got new new heads on there and i was like ain't no way (laughs) <laughs> I'm gonna let everybody ruin my brand new, uh, what is it, double pin stripe hedge or something like that. Oh and no, I feel sometimes I feel bad for beating the shit out of them. Yeah, because so. they look so nice, right? Yeah, and they sound so good. Um, but then I was like, oh, but no, but more importantly, people were coming in here using my drum set, and then everyone had the same drum sound, which was great for me, made my job easy. But I don't think that's what this show's about. This show's about your guys' sound and how you guys sound. And if you come in here playing my drum set, you're not gonna sound like a <laughs> fay. You know what I mean? You're gonna sound like whatever the hell I got. Yeah, um, I'm glad I, I'm glad I could bring this. Yeah, yeah, it it fucking knocks, dude. <laughs> I, I know Jesse right here is just uh, got to change his underwear. <laughs> <laughs> oh snap! No, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. We'll, we'll bleep it out. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Um, anyways, uh, you guys, what has your excuse me? What has been your uh, favorite show so far? Dude, honestly, I don't think we played like enough shows to like. All, we have had some pretty like. You haven't played that many shows? Um, we together. Have. Together, We yeah. play shows, but, like... Separate. Not yeah. always. <laughs> we raw dog but, like, with other people. It. Yeah. Uh, we yeah. raw dog it. It's very last minute. <laughs> and we've never been satisfied. Like, we it, we end up feeling, like, worse sometimes. <laughs> oh. That's not all the time. I think the most <laughs> recent two shows... Why do we do <laughs> Why do we Yeah, exactly. Stage? Like, why, uh, do we, why do we do this So ourselves? how many shows have you guys played together as a band? Oh, man. I'm not counting roughly, like, one. eight. Dude, really? Counting no on way. two hands? No, no. But eight. More than that, would you say? Yeah, Maybe well, under 20 with for this sure. Lineup, like with Ryan, probably two now. Or well, three. three. Oh. Ones. Yeah. And then before that, I want to say at least 10. Really? I don't remember. Under 20 for sure. Under okay. 20. Under yeah. maybe 15 around there. Yeah. At most. Geez, so you guys are fresh. You guys are fresh. And no. Well, you're putting a lot, a lot of effort in the songwriting for sure. Cause like, that shit sounds like really good. And mo- I think most other bands, especially with you know the the skill you guys all have, would probably be playing a lot more shows. Um, what what's stopping you guys from playing more shows? I mean, besides <laughs> obvious reasons, maybe getting booked. You know what I mean? Um, but are you guys like not trying to play that many shows? No, I think. It's just we all live far. like I'm from Temecula. <laughs> That's right. Aram's Temecula. living in Anaheim right now. Anaheim. Kayla Corona, Francis Corona, Corona. and Ryan are Hesperia. 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 Yeah, all it's like the, the four high quarters of the IE. It's kind of so true. that's like what's really stopping us from. Wow. Yeah. 
It's like when the planets align is when we can meet. Yeah, yeah, you guys all showed up at different times too. I had to I had to explain parking like three times. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, that's sorry. cool. It's cool. It's cool. That's I cool, I really man. appreciate it, man. Um, y'all, dude. Um, again, I'm thank you all for pulling up. I feel like it was a treat for me to be honest. Oh, thank y'all you. Y'all came in from different corners of the IE. <laughs> I never heard that before. Um, <laughs> all right, but come on. Out of all those shows, what was probably your best experience? I'm gonna say our release party for Frontega just oh, having like all yeah. of our close ones there was yeah. very uh felt like full circle mm. um especially having that song finally done for i don't know how long and finally being able to be all together again so yeah it was there def- it was definitely like somewhat emotional on some level and um so i wish you guys had more music out but it makes sense you're a young band so i'm really excited for what you're going to be releasing in the future and do you guys have any like uh, idea when that might be? I don't know. Like like we said, it's hard to meet up. But I think yeah. like even with uh, this lineup, we're finally starting to make moves. And with the release from Tega, like we we always like clash on what to post on social media. That's yeah. why we're finally doing stuff on what to release. And I think we do write pretty fast. Like I really appreciate and love playing with them because the songwriting is really fast and everyone's influence put together. Yeah. But it's so rare when we get together. So. I think we, at least for me, we shift the perspective. Like, okay, like, if we're gonna do this, we have to like, lock in and, like, at least we've been meeting like we've been like weekly now, right? Yeah, we've been pretty. Yeah, good. we've been pretty consistent now for the past like, two months. For, I think I think weekly or at least bi-weekly is like bare minimum. Yeah. Like, in order to be a band, I know. Weekly yeah. is like that's solid. Like that gives you enough time to practice new parts or write new songs and then come back refresh, ready to go at it again. Um, um, this is different from everything else we've been talking about, but like uh, it's kind of related to something else we talked about with social media. So like you, you mentioned it, um, fighting about posting or <laughs> what, what? Yeah, what, yeah. Again, it's 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 part of the game nowadays. Uh, you can you want to get as much reach as you can out there, and, and let me reiterate that. Like you, because you want your music to get out there and like see as many or um, get into as many ears as you can you you have to you know figure out a way to do that and right now social media is that way and you got to come out with like catchy stuff to make people want to watch it and listen to it and and tune in right so what what's that process look like for you guys i mean like you said i think it's just so saturated with the same types of videos nowadays and then um i don't know like we're still trying to find our style of posting Mm -hmm. and then we've had like like any person that posts on social media like you're perceiving you're letting yourself be perceived by the world so like hate comments will sometimes get to us or oh yeah yeah and then i don't know but we're still like like, oh this is too cheesy i don't want to post that shit but like i don't know um and we're not all of us are not really good at posting social media except kayla um yeah but she's like the one that was like they pushes you guys to post i'm like come on guys we gotta post this shit i know she knew where to fall out like three times in between songs (laughs) (laughs) did you actually I was like, dude. <laughs> I think I'll take photos of everybody while they're playing. She's right there with the phone. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. no, I'm sorry. Um, no, but uh, I, so like uh, uh, we had Weatherby on. You dude, I here? love Weatherby. Shout I love Weatherby. Weatherby too, dude. Those guys are fast. They're so funny. No, I, I just <laughs> even playing with them, I can't describe it. Like you have to be there to describe their humor. It doesn't do them justice. But it's like a, uh, it's like joining like the Three Stooges, but you're the Four Stooge. <laughs> And so you don't fit what they're doing their thing and they're making everyone laugh and you're just kind of like that's how I felt. No, I felt awkward too because I'm not. And I'm I, still, I noticed yeah. that, yeah. And I was, I was like, like I'm with you. I'm, I'm with you on that. But but it's very entertaining. Like even I don't have to say anything. It's just like funny just watching them go. So I, I went home and uh, I, I remember they said, "Oh, you haven't seen our TikTok?" Because I was we we're talking about posting, and <laughs> so I went to her TikTok, dude. It's so stupid. Um, dude, in a good I'm way, so, yeah. It's, yeah, so, it's no, funny. Like it's, it's the it's the worst best thing ever, <laughs> dude. You're fast. Dude, that guy. Yeah, shout fuck. out Tommy. Dude, Ethan, Tommy's Zach. a fucking. Dude, yeah. you're a G, Tommy. I really, I, I got mad respect for them, dude. Cause like they're they're very entertaining the way they played in the songs. Oh, in the songs they they played too. Like very, I feel like a lot of motion came out during them. Um, but yeah. So like, I, so and so you're always pushing them to post like, hey, let's do this, let's do that. And they're always like, nah, 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 not that idea. Yeah, it's really hard to, like, persuade them, to be honest. <laughs> um, because I feel like, yeah, things are cheesy, but, like, those are the things that, like, work mm-hmm. on social media. And, like, sometimes 
you kind of have to suck it up especially when you're like a small band yeah but like i don't know i feel like i always try to push them and it never works <laughs> hey i've been posting all the all the videos recently <laughs> though Uh-oh. um but no but it's it i've had the same like what she was talking about yeah like i, was like, I don't want to fucking post that shit but like i think i'm so passionate about like i'm so f- I don't know, I'm happy that we're finally doing stuff because yeah. it's been like a like a three year thing where we haven't done shit at all. So I'm like I'm willing to do whatever to just post, all over it, put ourselves. Basically. Yeah, yeah, dude. I'm happy too because I feel like I discovered a new band. I remember when uh, like Tame Impala was first around. Not to compare or anything like that, but like the feeling of like finding a band that was just like I think it was around Inner Speaker. I don't know if you guys know them, but anyways, uh, like. I was like, holy shit, like, dude, like, don't, like, or like Wolf Mother, like, when they first came out, I was like, holy shit, I could, I could not believe, like, no one really knew who they were, and I feel like that about you guys, I swear to God, like, I'm like, damn, dude, like, these guys fucking need to blow up, they're fucking sick, um, which is like, I'm, again, totally happy to have you guys here. Uh, another question I got is, how did you guys come up with the name of the band? Aram. Aram. There's, Aram. Like, there's like a period of time, I feel like during quarantine where i would just move from hyper fixation to hyper fixation because it was nothing to do you know yeah and uh there was a period of time where i started reading about like herbs and like folklore and like all that stuff <laughs> yeah. and the fae literally just means like fairies so oh really yeah what is that like a group of fairies or something like the fae i, I think it's so old oh English, really no? it's like yeah yeah oh damn that's sick it's funny because uh I had originally had Pixie somewhere in the name because I was listening to a lot of Pixies over quarantine. I was like, man, that's such a cool word. Oh, and then he said, and you're just like, and ah. Then, yeah, yeah, he said Faye. I was like, what the fuck is a Faye? <laughs> <laughs> and I looked it up. And I was like, oh, my God, it's like the same fucking page. Damn. So I got super excited about it. It's I didn't like it at first. No? It grew on you, though, huh? No. Still has? <laughs> no, yeah. no, I love it. I love it, yeah. I, love I don't it. like the the. <laughs> I think that's what you said. No, that was someone who slid up. Remember? He's oh. like, any band with a name that starts with the is cheesy as fuck. I'm like, dude, that's like 50% of the bands out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a lot of bands. Yeah, Honestly, a though, bands. a lot of the names that we pick out kind of just like get thrown in. Mm-hmm. You want to tell them what Frontier like, was named after? Frontega. <laughs> There's a... Ch- I'm going to get copyrighted, bro. I feel like uh, it had something to do with Fontana or something. I was like, I.E. Oh, I.E. Never mind. It's a, it's a chicken joke. sandwich. It's a chicken sandwich at Panera. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. It's just totally, it was, if you looked at one of our videos, Kayla said it's a placeholder name, but... <laughs> Yeah, I ended up I've sticking, yeah, I've seen that video. <laughs> it sounds but, cool. You know? Yeah, it sounds cool, but it it's sounds like like not that deep. It's just like has nothing to do with the song. I was just eating it one day <laughs> while I was making the song, <laughs> and I was like, I like this the name of Frontega. And That's what it. kind of sandwich is that? Can you tell us? It's a chicken sandwich. Like it has um, Kayla, what is it? Is it grilled or crispy? It's a grilled. It's cri- I think it's crispy. <laughs> Dude, this guy does not believe yeah, we're talking okay. about those names. And it has onions. What kind of sandwich? And like a, some type of sauce. Yeah, really it's good. pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Um, shout out Panera. Hopefully, they don't. Uh, I love, I love Panera, strikers. bro. Me and my girls are a little fans. pricey, but Panera. they got the soups, they got the salads, that chicken apple salad, yeah. dude. They need to sponsor the show. <laughs> yeah, I, up. I don't think I've had Panera. Ooh, you yeah. yeah. Frontega chicken sandwich. Sorry. We're gonna beat that out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. Oh, <laughs> no, I love Frontega. Hey, relax, yeah. dude. Um, Trying to drop the sponsor. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. Do you guys um have any shows coming up? Yeah, we're playing at a tiki bar on Thursday in Costa Mesa. Costa Mesa tiki yeah. bar, and uh, and through. so are you guys? Uh, I, I know I'm asked this already, um, but um, are you guys writing any more new music or plans for releasing anything new? Yeah, um, we don't have like studio time booked yet, but we know like exactly. We have a couple songs ready to go that we just need to like hop in there. A couple, probably a couple eight hour sessions, and I think we'll be good to go. Yeah. I don't know what everyone else thinks, but... No, I agree. Yeah, I just want to release the songs that we already, like, finished, because, like, <laughs> I just want to move the on and finish them. I swear to God, I was ho- when I, I went to listen to you today, you know, I, I put the music on while we're setting up in here, and I'm like, me look for an album they got. And I was like, oh, no album. <laughs> God damn it. I was, I was really hoping you guys had a lot more music out. Um, but I'll tell you what, man, that's a good sign. I mean, it just it's just me, but... I'm sure a lot of other people out there watching you and following you and seeing you at your live shows just really wish that you guys had music out because I really think you guys are special. Um, I'm not just saying that. Uh, every band that I've had on here, I believe in. in, in I, I believe in for sure. Like, that's the reason you're on the show. I wouldn't spend all this time and effort. I mean, you guys seen 
connecting everybody. it's only three of us here today one guy's mixing video this guy's on camera we have another one on no oh, this tripod right here which you know and then me like it's it's a lot of work so i really appreciate you guys coming here and playing for us today I appreciate um you guys yeah um, really cool. is, is there anything else you guys want to talk about before we wrap this thing up um not that i know of well right. I really appreciate your guys' time. <laughs> Thank you so much for putting on an awesome show for the crew and I. Thank you guys at home for watching or listening. Me, please make sure you follow, like, and subscribe, blah, blah, blah. Go check out The Faye at a show coming up. Oh, Tiki Bar, right? Yeah. And the Costa Mesa. Special thanks to the crew that make this all happen. Jesse Chaos on camera. And then we have Victor, camera switching. And then we got myself, Richard. Uh, we'll see you all later. Good night. Yeah. Good Bye. night. Thank you for having me. Thank you.